Well, first of all, you know, they have a lot of interchangeable pieces. And so their ability to change defenses, switch a lot, um, just use their overall athleticism. I think that's more um, than anything. Obviously, we're more familiar with the guys that have been there before. You know, Dante Scott, Hakeem Hart, uh, Julian Reese. Uh, but they have a good team. Jameer Young was a great addition for them. You know, he's really made them go. He can break you down off the dribble. He can make plays for himself. He can make plays for others. Um, I think that's going to be an important thing is because they, they'll come and get you some. They'll jump you some. They'll zone you some. They'll mix in their man. They'll switch. They'll do different things to get you to freeze, um, to get you to kind of think and go slow. And you know you got to keep playing. You know you got to keep moving the basketball. You got to keep playing. You got to keep executing. If you constantly are sitting around wondering what they're doing, you know they've accomplished what they wanted. You know they they want you to get there and just kind of be hesitant in what you're doing. But um, he's a he's a really good coach, obviously from the success he's had before, and he's done a really good job with this team. Um, the challenges of, of guarding Young. I know he's, he's, he's yeah. pretty talented. Just what makes him good? You know, just you know, quick. Knows how to play through um, through angles. Kind of a stop and go guy. He can hesitate, cross you up, get by you. And um, you know, it's easier said than done. But you got to try your best not to give him angles. You know, when he breaks you down, he's great at getting to the basket and, and making plays for himself or making plays for other guys. But he's a you know, he's a really good player. The way uh, your team played at Minnesota. I guess, give you a pretty good feeling about their ability to be consistent the rest of the season? Um, give me a good feeling during the Minnesota game. Um, you know, every day is a new day. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you got to make sure things can change. Things can change in guys' personal lives. Things can change in the league. Um, guys can get, you know, in foul trouble. You know, whatever it might be, there's a lot of factors that, that go into that. So that's what you're always leery of as a coach is just keeping everybody on the same page, making sure everybody's, you know, competing because, you know, everybody came here to start and play 30 minutes. You know, you never lose sight of that. Um, but the guys that are not in those roles, like now, they're really important to your team. So keeping everybody on the same page and understanding how valuable they are to us, I think that's the important piece as a coach. Just keep working that angle and keep talking to those guys because um, it's hard. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard. Guys have put in an extreme amount of time, and then sometimes it's like, ah, I'm playing 10 minutes or I'm playing 20 minutes, and that's not what they signed up for. Um, but when you're on a good team, you know, the, the guys that make sacrifices, everybody makes sacrifices, but the guys that really make sacrifices and come off the bench, that can be the difference. That, that, that can be the difference in winning and losing. Talk about their defense here. Keep you on your toes. Is Brady's evolution is someone who's really going to shoot the pick and roll? Is that high pick and roll uh, something that can deter when you don't know what you're going to see? Yeah, and that's what he has to be able to do. He has to take what defensive get, gives him. Sometimes the cross-court pass is open. Sometimes the lob's open. Sometimes he can get more layups. Other night it was a little bit of everything. And then they just they, they went under twice. So they would go under the first one and then go under the second one. And they just dared him. He probably should have taken four or five more. Um, but I thought he did a good job of just picking his spots and stepping up and shooting it. But we play Penn State, and the lob was open a lot, right? Um, the game before that, a lot of cross-court passes were open. Then you play the next one, you get layup. So you just, you know, don't have a predetermined thought. Just read the defense and trust your instincts. I understand you said before you, you were never really worried about Zach's cardiovascular, his endurance, anything like that. But just the way he's been able to be dynamic within your offense. Right. I think there was a, one possession where he sets a cross screen, screen bounces up, sets a high ball screen, and then rolls to the basket for a kind of finish. Right, right. Have you been able to use him on the move more than maybe you thought you'd ever be able to use him on the move? Yeah, just, you know, just so he stops his ball screen and doesn't overrun it. Sometimes he'll overrun the defender. Just stop it low and make that guard use that, that ball screen. But no, he moves well, you know, for somebody his size. I think when you say he moves well, it's just not a general statement. It's for somebody that's that big. But um, no, he's he's always been a guy that can that can move like that. You know, he's always been you know, been able to do that. So now it's just the the discipline and the understanding of getting the right angle. So now they got to do something defending the ball screen that they don't want to do. A lot of big guys don't like to get detached from him. So you got to force his man to help a lot. 
when you force this man to help a lot in their shots, he gets those tip dunks. When they help a lot and they get away, now he gets good post position. So bringing him out actually helps him when he goes back in. That's why we set that ball screen so much in transition. It's because now they set it, now they got to stop the ball. If they don't, Braden goes into the rim. Well, now when he dives, they've gotten off of him. Now when they come back to him, it opens up gaps to drive, it opens up gaps to cut, but it also lets him establish a deeper position, and that guy's behind him. How much more margin for him has just his effectiveness in picking the ball with Braden, just giving you offensively? If, if you're if you get knocked out of your initial offense, you can just right. fall back on that. Yeah. Well we, we initiate a lot, especially in transition, with that. And and so now when people take things away or they overdo things, if we're making shots, we stay with it. And now it gives us something to go to if we're you know, if we're not making shots. You know. And, and so now we're getting we've been able to generate good shots at times and then miss them. You know, that's basketball, right? Especially when you shoot from a distance. That's why people pack the lane. But now it allows us to go to something where it might not be, you know, Braden's layup or Zach's lob. It's, it's other people's shots, and and um, just the mix of it, I think, has really helped us.